What up guys, what's happening? It's West Knight, this is Creating Space. We're in the beautiful Wheelhouse Media Studio just beside Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte and I'm excited because uh, you guys know this battery story. You know the history with me and Signs and I'm walking into the Wheelhouse Media Studio today just after a great meditation this morning. Shout out Gabby Bernstein for the, for the meditation. And uh, I'm asking for signs. I'm like, look, God, you know, I'm, I, I want to make sure I'm still going in the right place. Keep sending me signs, letting me know that I'm, that I'm in, the right, uh, in the right space. And as I'm walking in, another Duracell battery shows itself, just like the speaking engagement of my old high school. So it lets me know this conversation with uh, this guy, Nick. <laughs> Nick Koser, the dancing weatherman <laughs> here in Charlotte. Yeah, buddy. It's going to be crazy because we were talking about signs yeah we were talking about following <laughs> passions man we're already here welcome to the show man Welcome, man to i am so excited to be here thank you and everybody here at wheelhouse i i accidentally stood you guys up last time <laughs> and i feel terrible i for was wondering it. if you were gonna actually mention that <laughs> i'm fact. here now so he was too big he big leagued us <laughs> no but, uh, not here I, 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 the only thing I big leagued you for was my bed. I, hey, I think I was napping, so respect. that's my bed. Respect. Man, I'm excited that you're here. You know what's crazy is your ability to consistently reverse engineer virality, man. I think it's amazing, um, considering that you were originally a D1 punter, right? <laughs> and now here you are as a weatherman yeah. who has so much drip, has so much creativity, <laughs> and has really the world of culture, uh, has the pulse in the world of culture, man. So I, I can't wait to kind of talk about how all this has come, man. But you were talking about some signs and following the signs yourself, man. Yeah. You know what's funny is, um, so last night I go, what's one thing that I want to definitely get out when, when Wes and I talk tomorrow? And in my mind I go, I've got this story about following the signs. And I had, I had not done any research on, on you or your podcast before that, but I was like, that's what I want to talk about. I want to make sure I get this one thing off my chest. And as I'm driving here, Stopped at a stoplight. I saw your Insta story. You just posted about finding that battery. <laughs> yeah. And literally at the bottom, it said, follow the signs. And I was like, dude, that's a sign to me right there. Let's so, go. Yeah, we're in the right spot. So what's your follow? The, what's your connection to following the signs? Where does what's that well, originate? I don't know. You, you hear a lot about, um, you know, there are a lot of cliche sayings like follow your gut. Sure. Or trust the process. Yep. And those are kind of, in my opinion, like played out. Sure. Not that they're bad, but you, you've heard that before. But... Like, following your gut to me is very instinctual. Like, nobody's really telling you anything when you're following your gut. You're just kind of doing it out of blind faith. When you follow the signs, though, that's kind of like the universe or God or whatever telling you you're on the right path, yeah. right? Um, so, I don't know. The story, the story goes, and my, bit, my story was, uh, or that I wanted to share was that five years ago, when I first got here to Charlotte, I was super overwhelmed in my new job because we had just started our morning show and um, it was tough times, man, because we were going up against some other stations that had been here for years. Ratings weren't great. And like, I just, I don't ever really get mad at other people, but I get super mad or frustrated at myself right. when, when I'm not doing well in my, in my mind. And it seemed like for months on end, I'd, I'd come home from work and I would just be so pissed at myself you know whether I didn't handle a situation well or I just didn't have a good show on the air that day um and literally I remember a few times like I'd get in my car drive home and just start screaming <laughs> just you know <laughs> just kind of losing it or literally like crying you know uh and tears streaming down my face like what am I doing wrong am I Ooh. in the wrong spot and um one day I just kind of had it it was a rough week and I wa my plan was to go upstairs, take a shower, and then as soon as I was done with my shower, go downstairs, work on my resume to, to go find another job, to apply wow. for other jobs. And that's, that's what the rest of my day was going, to, was going to look like that day. So I took the shower, I went downstairs, literally had just cracked open my laptop, and uh, the doorbell rings. And I had just started working on my resume. The doorbell rings, and I don't know about you, but I think... The younger generation in general these days, like when they hear the doorbell ring, they, they do anything but answer the door. <laughs> you know, it's True. like, is there an axe murderer out there? I can't there? tell you the last time I heard a Th doorbell. Yeah, thank you. You know what I mean? So everyone texts when they exactly. pull up or whatever. So I go, all right, I'm just going to ignore that. There's no way I'm going to answer the door. I'd literally let, rather do anything than, than answer the door. So probably, you know, I'm typing away on my resume. Five more minutes goes by and the doorbell rings again. 
And it kind of like startled me, you know, I was like, I forgot about it. And I yeah. was like, is that a different person? Right. Anyways, so I, I ended up getting up to get that door, uh, to answer the door, which even to this day, I can't believe that I did. And uh, I opened the door and it was the FedEx woman. And um, in my mind, I go, dude, this is weird. Normally they just drop the package off. and right. Normally they're leaving as you open the door to see who the heck was there, right? And she goes, oh my gosh, it's you. And I was like, oh, excuse me? Am I being like subpoenaed <laughs> to go to court? <laughs> like, what are you? She goes, no, I saw, I saw the, the name on the package. I thought it might be you. And I just wanted to see. And she was like, she went on to say, I love, I love the show. I'm a big weather enthusiast. I love you. You right. know, she was giving me some of these compliments that I just hadn't received in, in a while because I was new to Charlotte. And um, I don't know, it was a quick little... Reminder. Yeah, Keep well, it was, a, it was a quick little exchange. You know, it probably lasted like two minutes, but I went and sat back down in my seat and um, I was like, dude, that was crazy, you know? Just the timing of it to me. When you were questioning everything. Of course, yeah. A little it was a little time. on the shoulder, yeah. Yeah, and that woman, I've never spoken to her since. Maybe she was an angel. Maybe she's not even a human being, you know, but she didn't just help me get through that night or that, like, day or that week or that month. She kept me going for years. Wow. Yeah, and, um, you know, here we are today. Things are a little bit better nowadays, but, yeah. Things are way better. Things are way better. Me? You're the most recognizable weatherman in the United States. <laughs> well, arguably very in nice. the world. That's very nice of you to say. Arguably yeah. in the world, and it's amazing to have you on. I love those stories, man. We yeah. can't keep going moments. Yeah. Moments that yes. just push you just a little bit further. Right there. But yes. Shameless plug there. <laughs> man, so I'm excited. Let's kind of dig into a little bit of the story. And for those of you who don't really, they're not attached to culture, maybe they live in a cave and don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're dancing all over the world. Mm. Uh, you've got individuals now coming into the Fox studio mm, yeah. to dance with you. Yeah. Like you, you're that strong of a magnet. You're bringing people <laughs> in. But at one point you were like an athlete who yeah. actually played against LeBron yeah. in a basketball game. <laughs> let's, let's kind of start there. Yeah, sure. I, you know, I came up as like, you know, any kid, I think wanting to be pro in a, in a sport and football was kind of the sport that I always liked. So I ended up, I was an all state player in high school in, in a D1 school, and uh, I had some offers to go to a D2 or D3, so some universities, and um, I was like, you know what, forget it, go big or go home. So I, I tried to walk on at the University of Akron, and uh, initially I was there, in my mind, to be in the secondary, like a cornerback. Okay. Uh, so you got some wheels? I thought I did. Ah, got it. <laughs> not, not according to them, but I thought I did. So anyways, um, you know, after like a few practices, the coach was like, why don't you go and just focus on special teams? So I was like, cool. And I didn't have the wheels to like mm. cover, you know? Sure. So eventually I was like, okay, what's the least athletic position on the field? Punter. Yes. <laughs> so I tried to, I tried to make, you know, make it in that realm. You know, I did all right, but um, it just wasn't meant to be, man. Sure. It wasn't meant to be. So I did one year. And, uh, and I eventually, the, that second year, I went through like, I think two, three days. And I was like, this is it, I'm done. So I hung up my pads and I started focusing really from that day on, on my communications right. career. Maybe. Did you stay in Akron or did you? Did yeah, you I stayed at Akron. That? You did? Yeah, All I four stayed years? at Akron. All four years, yep. During the LeBron era, like yeah. you were saying. So and he was coming and playing at the, state, at the basketball <laughs> yeah, arena. Yeah, right? I used to hate him because <laughs> whenever his games would be at Akron, you couldn't find parking anywhere. Really? Yeah, so I couldn't find parking for my classes and I was always like, LeBron James, you... You such and such, <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get you. Who do you think you are? Yeah, who, to today, yeah. Right. He's like, you know, maybe the GOAT. So, uh, how, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about that? Is he the GOAT? Oh, man. Opinion? No, I, dude, I don't think you can really do it better than Jordan. Not only did Jordan do it, but he looked cool doing it. Oh, yeah, like the did. shoes, yeah. the image. I don't know. I don't think you're, you're ever going to do better than that. But, yeah, I would put LeBron too, in my opinion. Agreed. Yeah. I'm right there with you, man. And so this is... This is interesting. So coming into communications, sort of leave your athletic uh, endeavors behind you, coming into communications, like what pushes you into the world of, of being a weatherman? Like how do you, as a communications deal, how do you uh, dial it into the niche of like yeah. weather? Well, dude, I, had to, I'm, I wish I was smart enough to tell you like, boom, I knew weather was my thing, but uh, the universe had to nudge me really? <laughs> a couple okay. times, yeah. So I majored in communications. There was a there was an 
there was an on-campus radio station that I really liked doing. Um, and I kind of started off doing it as like a hobby, you know, I was just like a radio DJ. Yeah. And that was a lot of fun. Um, and so after college, I thought, okay, I'm going to take this little demo that I made and go to New York City with it and be a big star. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> and again, you know, everyone in New York had other plans for me, but I ended up getting an internship at MTV at their then XM satellite radio station. And um, it worked well, but, dude, New York City was just not my jam. Yeah, I don't I went, think it would be mine either. Dude, I went broke in, like, three hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> One trip to the bar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I just, after three months, I was like, I've had it with the city. So I went home, regrouped. I applied to a bunch of different radio stations and then one TV station that was in the vicinity, and I got a, I got hired at that one TV station. Okay. So I was like, here we go, man. And so then I actually was hired as a news reporter, no weather, and... Uh, so you're like on location. Yeah, yeah. Out. You know, like reporting at city council meetings and on crimes and okay. you know, stuff like that. And after about a year, my boss sat me down and goes, Nick... Uh, you suck. <laughs> Not in those words, You're but right, basically right. that's what he said. And he was like, so you have two options, you know, either we can fire you, and there's that, or our weather girl just got another job somewhere else, so you can do double duty. You can report and do the weather. And I think in him offering that to me, he thought that that would push me out the door because I wasn't really going to get a pay raise, okay. but double the, the responsibility. The so after two days of doing the weather, in my mind, I was like, why haven't I ever... Considered this. So what, what was the what was the shift? What did you love more about it? Well, the weather is not like the news where you have to be a you have to be I don't know, it's I can't really explain it. Like if you are a news reporter, you live news. That you're just wired that way. Right. Uh, and I'm not wired that way. So I don't know. For for whatever reason, I'm wired to do the meteorology to, to do weather. Right. Um, I like I like the challenge of trying to get something perfect that you'll never get perfect. Because no matter what you do, no matter how good you think you are at weather, you're never going to be perfect. Sure. There's always going to be something that's going to come along that you didn't see coming or whatever. And I kind of like that, that challenge more so than hard deadlines and facts, facts, facts. Um, so, yeah, I'm just a little more, little more wired for the weather. And plus, I find it more interesting. Sure. Like, I'm, I'm more of a positive person. The yeah. news is very much so not positive. Of course. Yeah. So let's talk about how you talk about self-awareness, right? So all of a sudden there's this feeling like weather's my thing. Yeah, yeah. Now you want to step into it and embody it and fully make it yours. Yeah. How do you begin to crest your personality? Sort of like start to feel comfortable in that position, make yeah. it yours. And then what, like I heard you were like rapping on the weather and yeah. whatnot. I mean, are these things true or are these fables? Yeah. Like, what? Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know. So once I got comfortable being on the air... That's just how I am. Like, I can't not do what I do. Got it. You know, I just can't not do it. So even, even at that first station, you know, it wasn't a morning show. It was an evening show that I was on, which you're typically a little more straight-laced than the morning shows that I've worked on ever since. But, uh, yeah, I would just do stuff like um, I remember one day I was like, hey, uh, I'm starting my own line of ponchos, you know, so if you guys want to buy them from me, go ahead. They were like, well, let's see him. So uh, it was just a picture of me wearing a trash bag. Yeah. You know, just like modeling a trash bag and just stuff like that. Just having I, a laugh. Yeah, I figure in, when you're in a position, either you, you got to come into that position how you want to be. Yeah. Because if you don't, it's going to be super awkward to like when slowly you change. To yeah. yeah. So I kind of came in full, full throttle and uh, luckily... They were cool with it. Sure. Or if they weren't, they just didn't tell me. So I kept going. Just kept doing it. And yeah, so fr from that job, I got a job in Texas where I started rapping the weather. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this is really where your brand starts to get built. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Let's go through that moment. All right. Man. So uh, I, I, got, I got hired in Beaumont, Texas on my first morning show. And um, so I, for 25 years, I lived in Ohio, packed up all my stuff drove from Ohio to Texas with like a tiny U-Haul. It was pretty scary, man. I had never made that big of a move in my life and started this morning show. I think I got to my, to my apartment at like 6 p.m. and I had to go into work the next day for something at like 3 a.m. So right there, I was like, boom, yep. this is the morning show world. Yep. Get yep. used to it, bro. Um, and yeah, for about a year, I, I had to get my bearings on that show. And then one day, 
it was super the, – the weather pattern in Texas can get pretty, like, stagnant. You know, sure. it was just sunny and hot every day. Right. Every day for six weeks. And we had a consultant come in a week or two before and, and say, like, you have to create that water cooler moment every morning where people will go to work and talk about what they saw on the morning show. And that's the be- – it's word of mouth is basically what he was sure. preaching. So I was like, okay, all right. And in college, I had done some parody songs on when I was a DJ, so – uh I was like, you know, I'm going to wrap the weather. i go back to parody, Nick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to wrap the weather forecast live. I didn't tell my boss because I knew. You did the whole forecast in a rap? Yeah, sort of. I mean, like, the first six lines were about the weather. And Can you the, hit me with the first six lines? Uh, let's see Do here. you remember? It's 8.04, everybody. Oh, yes, the rapping weather man is here doing what I does best. <laughs> I forget what the weather forecast yeah. was. Something about sweating off your high knees. Really? Highs in the mid-90s. Oh, man. Yeah, something like that. You had, you had you had people going nuts, I'm sure. Well, I was, don't know. Was, it, was Twitter like was social media? It, it, so then, a yeah, part of Twitter, this? Twitter was Twitter and YouTube were the way to do it then. So okay. yeah, after I did that, I put it on YouTube, and after a couple weeks, it gained some steam and it went viral. Um, okay. Not my first one. It was like my second or third, but uh, second or third viral moment or second or third video. Second or third weather forecast that I had wrapped. Okay. Yeah. First viral moment. Was it? What is that like? Because for hmm. those of us who are creating content, we're yeah. content, cr- you know, creators. We live in this space of sharing online. I've never experienced a viral moment. I've yeah. seen other individuals experience a viral moment, but when when something pops like that, do, is there sort of like a, an earthquake where there's tremblings before, mm. and you you get an idea, hey, something's about to happen here. What's a viral moment really like under the hood? Gosh, good question, man. I've never been asked that. Um, well, it was different then than it was than it is now. Yeah. So then, my big vir- my my big moment was someone goes, "Hey, did you see you're on uh, Break.com? Do you remember that website?" I absolutely remember. So th- I guess that was back in 2010. That's where viral content went to become. That was big. like World Star. If you yeah! hit World Star at that time. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So and I was like, "What the heck's Break.com?" And I went there and I saw that my video at the time it just got posted had like 50,000 views, and to me at that point it was a lot. Um, and then throughout the week and weekend, I saw it kept growing and getting bigger. On break or on your YouTube, like your YouTube? On break and kind of everywhere. I put it on, I think I put it on my Facebook page and on Twitter and stuff, and it was getting shared around. And um, so, so that was, and, and then the emails start coming in and stuff like that. And that's, that's how you know. And in this day and age, when something goes viral, you know, in my opinion, you know, because everyone starts just tagging their friends. Got it. They don't. They don't post like that was cool or good yeah. job. It's just tags. tags of friends. Blah 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 blah, and then yeah, you start getting like DMs and and messages and tweets and stuff like that. So, uh, so a viral moment back in that day. All of a sudden, the emails come in, and are those emails of people just wanting to reach out and communicate, or are those inbound requests for you to be on yeah. bigger shows? Yeah, yeah, all, all of that stuff. Some people say like when I was rapping the weather, some people from different countries say thanks for doing that. You know. I'm learning English by watching your video, wow. or yeah, or um, you know, you're you're I'm I'm in the field and you you know you inspire me to keep going, and yeah, you'll get a lot of requests for all kinds of things, sure. man. Like appear at my wedding and rap or dance, yeah. or um, do you want to be on this awesome podcast called Creating Space? Yeah, sure, stuff like that. So. Yeah, it kind of runs the gamut, man. So, so that begins, and obviously it's intoxicating. People appreciating what you do, yeah. it's intoxicating, right? Absolutely. You're, you're a performer. People are enjoying your performance. Yeah. Uh, it's no different than playing at soccer or playing yeah. football for yeah. an audience, right? So what happens next, man? That becomes addicting to a degree. It's like, okay, I want to one-up myself. How do yeah. I continue to allow that to happen? How does that seep into your world? And well, um, what, co- what what changes from there? Yeah, you're absolutely right, man. You kind of want to do it bigger and better. Um, and that's, see, I like that challenge. I don't necessarily make content for that intoxicating feeling. Like I said, I can't not do what I, what I do. I would be doing this regardless, I sure. think. But um, I think just in general, like if you're a creative person, like I know you are, yep. that's what you think in your mind. You gotta, you have to in your opinion, do it better the next time. Right. And if you're not doing this, yep. you're doing that. Exactly. And that's that's a tough thing to wrap your it's head a around. It's a tough game. Yeah, because be it you, you can easily kind of get in your own head by doing yep. that. Um, so yeah, the first time I went viral, I immediately got a job 
at a different station and went elsewhere. And everything changed. So I wasn't really able to ride that wave. It kind of went like this and like that. Okay. Um, but this time around, I've stayed put and I've been able to see what it's like when you continue in that same space. Got it. And yeah, I mean, when my first, when my first slide like this challenge video hit, it went, it went big and then I was like, well, here we go. I got to yeah. do something to here follow it up. Again. Yeah. Uh, so with Slide Like This before the Cam Drip Chronicles, because it was really interesting to see the Cam Drip Chronicles yeah. unfold. Yeah. Because if I'm thinking, if I'm putting myself back in my athlete, you know, I know. persona, and I'm like, okay, here's a meteorologist. I'm already taking a step. Cam is going to be Cam, just like you're going to be Nick, yes. right? And, and so it is... It, it, it's an interesting play, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like banter, and at the same time, it's like appreciating yeah. someone being themselves. So, how does that start? Because that I feel like that might have been your integration into sure. the culture of Charlotte. Totally, yeah. yeah. I, well, yeah. Um, okay, so all that started. I was not necessarily. I've always been like a quantity over qu wait, a quality over quantity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I've always embraced social media, but. I don't, I can't, I just can't bring myself to post stuff every day, sure. like, like some of these people will. And I'm, I'm trying to get better at that, you know, that's kind of one of my things in 2020 that I want to try to maybe do more of. But two years ago, maybe three years ago now, our bosses sat us all down and, and, they, and they go, look, uh, social media is like it. So we want you to focus on posting personalized stuff about you on all your platforms, because the thinking there is if people see the real you, then they'll go and watch you on TV rather than watch you on TV and then follow you. It's sure. like the way to sell your, yourself and your brand these days. So they literally told us you have to post once on Facebook, once on Instagram, 10 times on Twitter every day. And I was like, what? what? Yeah, I go, I, I, wish, I wish I could have had some recordings of my reaction because I was just like, that's, that's another full-time job. Right. Why would you post that much? People are going to get sick of you. You're going to, your quality is not going to be there. After a few like weeks or months, I finally just kind of gave in and, and started doing stuff. So all of, all of the stuff that I've done in Charlotte here has been based out of like boredom or just not having something to post. I mean, this day. is like your poncho 2.0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. you went back to what you knew worked. Yeah, yeah. And then it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, I was um, just... The what one was day, the first outfit? Well, yeah, the one day I was just going through Instagram and I saw that Cam posted a picture of his outfit and it had something insane. I think it was 30,000 likes in five minutes. Yeah. And I was like, man, if only I could post something that got 30,000 likes in five minutes, my bosses would Ooh, love me yeah. and I wouldn't have to post for like a week. <laughs> and I'd be yeah. done with this. So... Um, I was like, you know what though? I've got those. I've got shorts that kind of look like that, and bracelets. And obviously, around here, everyone knows Cam for his sure, his drip, his swag, yeah, his drip. Swag. Yep. Everyone knows him for that. So, I did a side by side, and uh, so you had something already in the closet that kind of looked like it. You didn't have to go out and no, and not for find that one. Design it. Got it. Okay. Not for that one. I had borrowed my wife's bracelets and her necklace. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so, and so I did the side by side just to put something on, on social that day. And uh, that, that post, for, for me at the time, got a, lot, a big response, you know? And at work, people were talking about it. And I was like, okay, this I'm, has, just gonna this keep this, I'm just gonna keep it going. And I think that the second time I did it, or the third time, Cam then liked and commented. And he, he kind of gave me the seal of approval. Yeah, he was yeah, like, this, this is, is cool. funny, I'm yeah. laughing, right. awesome. Yeah. And like I'm never the last want... thing you want to do right. is rub Cam in this city, right? <laughs> yes. You don't want to. You definitely don't want to do that at that time because this is like Super Bowl Cam, yeah, era, right? Yeah. Like this is this is when he's on top of the world. People yeah. in soccer over in Italy are like Superman in it, dabbing it, yeah. right? Uh, that was a wild time. So a great, great moment for you to jump in, yeah, yeah, and be yeah. a part of that combo. Yeah, he, yeah. So in my opinion. Cam was the guy that really got me going. He he kind of gave me the clout, you know. To, yeah, for sure. And the okay to keep keep going with it because I did not want to do it in like a disrespectful mocking, yeah, disrespectful yeah. way, and, you know, because that's just not who I am at all. Nah, nah. And so yeah, so so this process gets built out. Now you have to. It's like speed. Like you got to figure mm. out. Are you now communicating with Cam? Like yo, what are you wearing on Sunday? I wish. Like I need right. I How wish. does that work? Because you got to move quick to get yeah. stuff that looks like that. I would. Uh, you I have would, a team in place. No, I would wait to see what he would wear 
or post, and then immediately I'd start looking for stuff. Really? Yeah, and so a lot, a lot of it was bought at Goodwill, had to make a lot of it. Some stuff, it was cheap, I'd get it on Amazon, yep. uh, and maybe return it later. <laughs> We're so they, similar, man. Hopefully That's the cameras amazing. didn't catch that, yeah. <laughs> And, and so, yeah, there's no team. It was just like me, like duct taping stuff. In this my is sheer room. hustle for you to continue yeah. to, to keep this alive. Yeah, yeah. So Cam, Cam Drip Chronicles goes well. You, mm-hmm. you establish like a relationship with him, mm-hmm. other players in the city. Yeah. Get you connected in, into there. Mm-hmm. Then what happens? How do you, how do you one up from there? Well, is that where a slide like this begins? Kind of. Like everything has a shelf life, especially on the internet. Good yeah. Lord. It's like things on the internet last. <laughs> A day, a day in the internet is like a is like a month in yeah. real life. So, yeah, towards the end of of that season when I was doing cam stuff, the the buzz, the hype started going a little bit downhill, and that was going into the off season. So I was like, okay, now I need got to figure something else out. And again, just just one day I was bored, and I had nothing to post, and I was again scrolling through my feed. And I saw this ad for TikTok. I didn't know what TikTok was at the time. And it was an ad for TikTok. And I saw these dudes dancing the slide like this. Yeah. And I must have seen that ad 10 times. And every time I'd come by it, I would stop. And just I was mesmerized by the song and the dancing. Sure. And I must have watched it about 100 times. And then eventually I go, I think I can do that. And I practiced it, went into work the next day. Did it off air. It wasn't a live thing. I did it off the air and um, posted it. Went home, took a nap, woke up, and nothing since that nap has been the same. <laughs> you know, really? Yeah, I woke up to a I bunch mean, of comments. You know, people tagging their friends in the in the comment section, and yet yeah, it, it's been, been so. Like that since. Let's sit here for a second. So, what do you think it truly is? Do you think it? Do you think it is? your ability to dance and finding the new challenges, right? And, and sort of riding that wave. Is it the fact that like you nail it every time? Is it the fact that you have a suit on? What do you really truly believe you know, that is like the true uh, component? Secret of, sauce? Yeah, it's because it's, I can see it and you know you see it. Everyone sees it. Yeah. But I, I'm, I was thinking, what is like, what it? what is it? Right? You know what it is, man? And this is the most cliche answer, and people are going to roll their eyes so hard, but it is authenticity. Yeah, I, I think that is what it is. Because I'm, I'm a white dude, okay, and I've always loved rap and hip-hop right. and that culture. Mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe it's because I was born in Cleveland, but, um, and that's what it is. And I think also kind of the juxt- juxtaposition of me doing this news job, which is traditionally pretty buttoned up and sure. suited up, I think that... That is is probably what it is, but more so than anything, I mean, trust me, man. It's not like I just, you know, put these two couple things out and they've hit. I've done a bunch of other things sure. that um, maybe weren't as authentic, and they just. That's why the rapping hit, I think, too, because it's, yeah. it's like me, man. It's just like me kind of being vulnerable and being like, I'm a white dude in in the yeah. weather, and I like. This. Yeah, that like, authentic energy comes through the screen, and it's amazing. I mean, it's so cool to see culture. I mean, like Lolo Jones down there. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got athletes everywhere, comedians, yeah. actors. Who are your biggest sort of fans, like people that you're fans of, that you're communicating with, that are fans of you? Huh. Um, I, you know? Yeah, I like, um, well, I met Nelly this summer. And Whoa. Nelly was like, Nelly knew who I was, and that blew me away. That's <laughs> it doesn't, cool, man. Doesn't get cooler than that to me, because when I was a senior in high school, and Country Grammar came out, <sighs> played it all year, man. Man, <laughs> that I mean, if, if that thing had, if we had Spotify to know how many Dude, streams that had, right? With that billions of streams, Easy. Country Grammar. You couldn't poke your head out the window without hearing uh, no. a Nelly song, I know, it's right? So true. Especially in the southeast, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if uh, if it was the same for you. Same in Ohio. In Ohio. Yeah, yeah, same deal. Um, so that was that was cool. Chili from TLC. Her and I like text. That's which cool. That didn't happen before yeah, all this. And I don't know. so many doors, I'm sure, for yeah. you. Man. Invitations. You, you've been on MV, in, MTV, yeah. Video Music Awards. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's you know, there's yeah. not, there's no shy feet there. That was pretty right? crazy, yeah. Unbelievable. What was that like for you? It was pretty cool because, um, I don't know, man. Well, I grew up, I grew up my whole life in August, basically revolved around the Music Awards, MTV Music Awards. Yeah. You and I are similar in age, so you probably felt the same way. Sure. 
you know, and then when I'd make sure I was watching them when they aired, and then I'd rewatch them a billion times because they were wanted to see all my favorite parts and stuff. So, yeah, being on that show again, 17 year old me that's still in me was like freaking out. You know, I wasn't at the show. Right. I filmed a thing that they showed at the show, and it was just it was just very cool. Another part of like going viral or when something like that happens is. A lot of people that you haven't talked to in a while reach out and they say, Nick, hey, it's me from high school or college. Yeah. God, I love seeing this stuff. And that, that part is very cool. So um, I got a lot of that during the MTV Music Awards thing. And uh, yeah, that made that, that moment special for me. It was just kind of reconnecting with some old people. It's amazing to be able to see what your authenticity will, will bring yeah. to you, right? Yeah. So let's kind of transition into that, man. You know, being yourself and consistently being true to who you are uh, has multiple sides of that. What about the Nick that is just Nick? Not, not the meteorologist, not the, the viral, super mm-hmm. drippy uh, <laughs> you know, dancer. What's life outside of the social component like for you? Uh, very chill, probably similar yeah. to you. I mean, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm really actually, when, when you take away like the internet side or whatever, I'm very like kind of shy and chill. Really? Yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily go about my day making a big scene. I don't right. like dance through Publix. <laughs> sure. But um, yeah, man, I just, I'm just living, living in the burbs. Uh, I'm a dad, got a kid. Sure. Pick him up from school every day. Um, the kids, his buddies go crazy when, you, when they see you? They, they're so, he's 10, so they don't really. They're not sure yet. They're not in social media yet, but it's high schoolers and college kids. Yeah. They, I get some love from them, but uh yeah, I like to work out. Um, How do you keep the social side uh, separate from your family and, and I don't. with your wife? <laughs> it's it's got to be. I'm always on my it. phone, and my right. wife's like, "Put your phone down." Got it. So it's tough. That's that's the hard part this day and age. Is there's so many platforms, it's hard to keep up with them all, man. Of course, as man. you know, I mean. Yeah. I'm still unsure whether TikTok's for me, man. I know it's perfect for an individual like yourself yeah. who has those talents. Yeah. I want to get you to dance on here just so people can, but if you ask me to dance, I'll melt in this seat. <laughs> you know? So I think it's, it's super interesting to see how you're able to uh, keep it away from, you know, it can be toxic at times for yeah. relationships, right? Yeah, Do you yeah. have any... Do you have any suggestions for, other than just literally leaving the phone away, uh, for how to manage it when it's so important to your brand and, and what it is that you do? Yeah, luckily my wife is a pretty private person, so sure. I just know to keep her out of it. Got it. And uh, I, I keep my son out of it just because I don't want him to be exposed to that yet. I know it's coming. Right. So I don't want, I want to push that off as far into the future as I can. Yeah. So right now, those two things are really helping me out. When my son gets older, we'll see. We'll see how all that goes, but um, yeah, for right now, I, I I'm a big like proponent of responding to everybody. Yeah, DM. engaging. It's got to be tiring though, man. Yeah, engaging is so important, but it's got to yeah. be tiring. And it is. It's like a full time job, but um, the moment I, you leave someone on scene is the moment <laughs> that they get their feelings hurt. You will get roasted for yeah, that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I try to respond to every DM or every comment someone leaves at least under one of my platforms. Sure. I'm not like that on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, but definitely Instagram. I do my best to, 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 to do that. But yeah, you kind of have to carve out time. Like I think right before bed, you know, is yeah. when I when I do a lot of that. Okay. So or or at work. Sure. You know, when I don't have when there's a little bit of downtime. Do you have any thoughts about how you position this potentially to have opportunities to, for like you mentioned weddings? Yeah. Uh, you mentioned events. Do you do you have a desire to get out and take this sort of on tour? Yeah, man. I'm like I, like we were talking. I'm looking for the signs sure. to, to figure out where I'm supposed to go. I've got this little merch line out here. I love fashion. I saw it. It's wild. Yeah. I love fashion, and so I'm you know I would like to. Maybe do more than that. Where can we um, find some of that merch? NickCoasterMerch.com. Okay. Yeah. A little Shopify site? A little Shopify site. I like it, man. <laughs> and That's... actually, this is printed and made uh, right here in uh, the Carolinas. So you're kind of, I'm keeping it local, trying to bring Charlotte to, to people that aren't from Charlotte. I'm you know digging I mean? that, man. Is it? Do you have tank tops? Do you have sweaters? Like, what, what type of merch? You got is shirts it? and hoodies for now. Yeah. And we'll brand out, or we'll branch out and maybe do some other stuff. Uh, in the future, but yeah, Nick I don't know. Coaster merch, Nick Coaster merch dot com. Yep, love that, it. man. Other than that, I'm not sure. I'm just kind of uh, just kind of looking for opportunities. So, 
I moving say moving kind of forward into this, man, I, I'm just inspired by your authenticity, right? And your ability to consistently create things that you know culture wants. Um, I can't wait to see what happens next. We've got soccer coming in mm -hmm. to Charlotte, which I'm obviously super excited about, but I hear <laughs> yeah. you're not that big of a fan of the game. <laughs> but I think, I, I think what's really interesting, and, and Atlanta United has been really a, a good case study for this, mm. Atlanta United has doubled the, the attendance of the Atlanta Falcons. They're at like oh, 67 to 72,000 fans a game. Wow. Where the Falcons are like low 40s. That's so crazy. it's wild to see this community of like misfits grab on, like creatives grab onto the game, the, huh. the world's game, and to become like, you know, we got We Ready, Archie Eversole. Yeah. Remember? We. Yeah, ready. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the anthem of Atlanta United, huh. right? So like, Culture is starting to really grab soccer in this community. I'd, I'd be interested to see what kind of position you could play within that. Well, you know, that. I, I did do a Drip Chronicles of a soccer guy in the summer, Hector Berlin. Okay. And it uh, went well. Uh, yeah. Apparently, he was kind of the Cam Newton of his team in, in Europe over there. Uh, I think Spain is who he plays for. So, I'm, dude, I'm open, man. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't not like soccer. Um, I used to not like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, going, it's better for you to say it on this show. <laughs> yeah. You exit the studio. Then, no, <laughs> yeah, I'm I don't want to hear it in the streets. No, I used to not like it. And then um, during the World Cup, I found out that I've got some roots in Croatia. Croatia did well. Luka Modric. So, yeah, yeah, so now since they did so well, soccer's fun. Actually, people think soccer is boring and that it's slow. That's the big thing that I'm hearing. And sure. like it's low scoring, but it's not, man. If you watch and you have a dog in the fight, Yep. It's constant entertainment. Especially when you get into the environment and you hear the chanting all game long. Yes. It, it just turns into a true experience. They are new. They're a different type of fan. Yeah, man. The soccer people. Yeah, man. I was in Vancouver when Vancouver was transitioning from a second division team into the MLS. Yeah. So I'm excited to compare and contrast what it was like when Vancouver was coming into the league. Oh, and yeah. what Charlotte looks like when they're coming into the league. Yeah, yeah. That's um, cool. Shout out to David Tepper for being able to yes. organize that and bring it together. I agree. That's a smart man right there. <laughs> As we close this thing and round it out, man, um, super inspiring story that you have, man. Showing that being creative, being authentic is mm -hmm. the way to connect. Uh, I call it heart marketing, right? So yeah. like your ability to connect to people's hearts um, and to give them sort of the, uh, I guess the permission to be more of themselves. What, do you, what has this journey really taught you um, about that, that you can be yourself and the world can see you and accept you no matter how that comes. What, what would you say to other people about that? Uh, I would say, I would say the stuff that you're most maybe shy about or the stuff that makes you vulnerable, mm. is probably the stuff that you need to put out. Wow. Because I feel like the stuff that you care the most about, you tend to magnifying glass it you know sure so if you are if you love to sing but you're scared to sing in front of people that obviously means you should do that yeah because <laughs> that's what you know I, I i put absolutely no stock in myself as a badminton player right so if i went out in front of a bunch of people and i really sucked at playing badminton i'd be like oh whatever it doesn't matter deal. but like if i was bad at you know something that i'm telling the weather yeah you know that would be terrible so sure so i would say that's the seat that's the special sauce the thing that you know you're the most vulnerable about is probably what uh, you should you should pursue you should expose a little bit i think what does 2020 look like for you i don't know man um it's starting off great being here with you i hey, appreciate this that, is I'm already a highlight obviously we're like six days in but sure on december 26 2020 this will still be a highlight and um i don't know man just gonna just gonna you know follow Follow whatever uh, signs I get and just kind of see uh, see what see what happens. I'm excited to see what comes, man. I know no matter what is to come, there's going to be a way that you're going to position and utilize it to continue to like build. We'll try. So, yeah, man. We'll it's, do it's, my it's, best. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. So, Nick, man, thank you for coming on to the show. Of course. And, dude, I, I can't wait to continue to watch this thing. Listen, uh, I want to ask you a question. Hey, shit. Right, okay. Let's go. Let's go. All right. So... Uh, in doing this, okay, Charlotte is an interesting city because um, there's a lot of content out there, but sure. there's a certain niche that I think that uh, needs to be filled, and I think you're doing it. Wow. So what, because you, you're, you're a motivational guy. Just in watching yeah. your Instagram story this morning, like, I felt it. Like, obviously, yeah. you're great at that. 
What's 2020 look like for you? What do you want to bring to Charlotte? Wow, man. That's a great question. Thank you for, yeah. for that. Because I've been living in that vision for, for a while now. Yeah. Just being in Will House and being with this group is uh, a certain byproduct of like tr- being brave. So 2020 for me is to just keep being brave, man. Yeah. Like, I think I embody like a, a real courageous energy. Mm-hmm. And the more I let that out, the more I feel like it's helping other people be brave, because fear is a silent killer, man. Mm. Like, it will asphyxiate you and you don't even realize that it will, like, take your dreams away. Mm -hmm. And so for me, 2020 would be like, how many other inspiring individuals can I be brave enough to invite into this location to create content that will help unlock people's dreams inside their mind? Because, like, limiting beliefs, they're everywhere. Yeah. And if you can create content, this is my dance. Mm-hmm, right, like mm-hmm. I would love to be able to step up and be able to crush it like you do, mm-hmm. man. But uh, my drip is when I'm like in front of someone talking about their dreams mm-hmm. and facing themselves. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about there being a niche in this arena in Charlotte, I just want to bring more of this yeah. and bring more of you. You know, I reached out to Michael Bublé this morning, Ooh. right? Diana Ross this morning. Hey, now. Wale is coming into the city. No way. Right? I want Wale in here, right? Yeah. Wale in 2009 was huge for me as I was transitioning out of College of Charleston into Vancouver. Yeah. Uh, his music really touched my soul at that time. So just people who are impacting the world in really unique ways, we call them badasses, like doing really unique badass things that don't look the same as everyone else. Yeah. I want to amplify their messages of how they got there. Sounds like you need to be a motivational speaker. (laughs) Yeah, I'm working my way into that, man. But it (laughs) takes time for people to really, when it comes to being a motivational speaker, there's a lot of, there's a lot of noise out there, right? Yeah, of course. There's a lot of people doing it. But, uh, man, I guess I have to, I have to have culture certify me first, you Mm. know, and, and make sure the message connects. So, a lot more of this, man, is what it looks like for 2020. I'll be getting married in uh, this year. Hey, buying congrats. A home. Nice. Um, so, yeah, man. Uh, cool. And hopefully con- continue to stay connected with you, man. Of course, for man. Sure. Look, I'm going to end this by saying this. Continue finding those batteries. Yeah. 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 I, I'd love to give this to you today. Oh, man. dude. I, I, it's just a battery, but I bet you'll never look at a battery the, the I bet you I again. won't. Nate, dude. Hook me up, brother. Thanks for coming on the show, my man. Of course, man. Appreciate this is you, awesome. Man. All right, guys. Really appreciate it.